everyone, this is Donna, the Technology and Media Librarian at Upper Arlington Public Library. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create and organize resumes using a free Google Drive account. Creating a resume from scratch can be so difficult for a few reasons. Um, first and foremost, you have to think about how to represent yourself and your work history in a way that makes sense to both you and to the person who's reading your resume. You also need to think about how best to format it. And then on top of that, you need to make sure that that formatting looks the way on paper it does in your head. And that can be a really frustrating and time-consuming process. So in this video I want to show you how you can use tech that you already have access to to make that process a lot easier and a lot less time-consuming. So what you'll be able to do is number one, create a resume using an existing template so that you can just apply your own information to that template. Number two, save it to the cloud so that it's accessible to you wherever you access your account, whether you're using a web browser or you're using a mobile device. And three, to show you how you can download your resume into different formats. I'll also be showing you how you can organize your resume so that you can find it at a later date, as well as how to send it using the cloud service sending capabilities that are already structured in. If you have an account with Google, you already have these tools at your disposal, so let's make sure that you put them into use to save yourself that little bit of time and to save yourself that little bit of effort. This is what you'll need to get started if you don't have a Google account. Um, an email address so that you can sign up for a Google Drive account. If you have your Gmail account, then you can use that login credential to sign in. You'll also need to create a password for Google, so make sure you're ready to create a good, strong password. And just a little bit about Google Drive before we get started. With Google Drive, you get 15 gigabytes of free storage that is spread out across Google Drive, Gmail, and Google Photos. So that's the largest of the free storage capacities that I'm going to talk about in this video series. We'll also talk about Microsoft OneDrive and iCloud in later videos. Um, but just know that if storage space is at a premium for you, Google will give you the largest amount of storage space for free to start off with. So keep that in mind. And if you create files using Google's cloud-based software, so that includes Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides, any documents that you create using those software programs do not count towards your Google Drive storage space. So again, if storage space is at a high premium to you, then this is a great way to create resumes for free and not have them count against your once you've logged into Drive, you can see that we have a brand new, fresh Google Drive. It's completely empty. It's ready for us to put files and folders into it. And to do that, we're going to go straight to this new button in the top left corner of our screen and click on it. And then we're going to scroll down to Google Docs, but do not select Google Docs. Instead, hover over this little arrow and select from a template. And this will open up the Google Docs template gallery where you can access not just resumes, but other types of pre-formatted documents, including letters. So once you're here, you'll see the resume section is up here at the top. Select a resume style, and it's entirely up to you which resume you select. So I highly encourage you to take a look at all of them before you make a decision. For the sake of this video, I'm going to pick this particular format only because I like the layout. I think it's something that I can easily edit with the information that I plan to input. But look through the gallery, think about which one is right for you based on your work history, how you want to format your work history, um, what your needs are, what your aesthetic is. And that'll apply for uh, OneDrive and iCloud later in this video too. So click to select a resume and it'll open up as a Google Doc in your browser tab. So once it's open, it's here, it's in our tab, um, and it's ready for editing, but the first thing that you should do is rename your resume. And don't just rename it, but give it a name that means something to you. Remember that you might be making copies of this resume in the future so that you can tweak it or rearrange your information or add new information as your work history changes. That means there may be lots of copies of your resume hanging out here in Drive. So if we need to rename a resume later, I'm going to show you how to do that a bit further along in the video. But for now, let's just give this a name. Um, my fake librarian for this resume is called Jane Doe. I know, super original. And this is going to be her resume. So I'm going to call it Jane Doe resume. Um, it's pretty descriptive for now, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. And I also like to use dashes in my file names. You can see here, um, some people prefer underscores. Some people prefer to use spaces. Just go with your preference. I use dashes. That's just easier for me. So this is your resume. It's ready to start editing. And to do that, all you need to do is click wherever there are preformatted text and go ahead and add that text in. So...
you can see I don't have to change my font. I don't have to change the font size. Um, I don't have to add any of this information and it's already been done for me. So what you need to do is click in each section of this document and begin typing over it with your own information. It's pretty straightforward. Um, but what is great about using cloud-based services like Google Drive and the others in this video is that as you are typing and as you are making these edits, you're saving. No need to stop every so often and hit save or type control S on your keyboard, which I'm sure we're all used to doing and it can be really frustrating if you've made a bunch of changes and then it turns out you haven't saved them. Um, as you are making changes here, those changes are saving in real time on Google Drive. Um, if you log into another device using the same Google account, your changes will be reflected on that device or on that web browser. So your resume or resumes are accessible wherever you can log into your account. So you can see here, all changes saved in Drive. And as I'm typing, just keep an eye on that little message up here because you'll, say that, you'll see that it says saving. Um, one other thing that you might want to do after you've made all your edits, after you've put this resume together with all of your information in it, is to create a hard copy. Um, very often we like to have a PDF version of our resumes or a Word document version of our resumes depending on the requirements for the job application or the site where you'll be uploading. You can do that here in Google Drive by clicking on this file menu. And then you can see there's a download button here that gives you different file format options so that when you do download a copy of your resume, you can download a Microsoft Word version or you can download a PDF document. Now, if you've watched our top tips for Google Docs video, which is available in our tech playlist here, you might already know that when you go from Google Doc format to Microsoft Word format, sometimes all of those changes don't align. There might not be similar fonts, some of these, changes like the spacing or the way that the columns or the different sections are aligned it doesn't always translate perfectly to Microsoft Word. They're just two different formats. So a PDF version might be preferable for you in this situation because it'll preserve the formatting just as it is. PDFs are also sometimes really helpful because not everybody has Microsoft Word. So if your recipient doesn't have Word, a PDF is the perfect option for them because that's universal. Um, it's portable document format for a reason. So what you can do is click File, Download, PDF, and then here I'm in Google Chrome, so mine's just gonna drop to the bottom of our screen once it's finished downloading, and this will be available on your computer for you to move to your flash drive or to your external hard drive, or you can leave it on your computer as is and arrange it however you need to. Just click to pop that open and you can see that it maintains all of this formatting for me. So that tool is already built right into Google Drive and it's ready for you to use. So not only have you built this resume in Google Docs and it's saved to Google Drive, but now you have a hard copy that you can make portable and attach wherever you need to so you've got a backup version. Quick word of warning though, when you do a Google Doc and download a hard copy, any changes that you make to this Google Doc in the future are not going to be reflected in the hard copy. So you might find yourself going back and re-downloading every time you update your resume. There's another tool built into Drive and to all of the services in this video uh, that will enable you to make duplicates of your files quickly and easily. And I don't just mean hard copies, but I mean duplicates within your cloud storage service. So there's a lot of reasons that you might want to make a copy of a resume and make that copy accessible to you. Um, for example, if you like the format of this style of resume, we have our original, it's Jane Doe resume up here at the top. Um, but if you want to create copies to rearrange the information in it, maybe you've added some skills, you want to emphasize you know, a job history so that it's skills-based rather than chronological, um, you can always do that with your resume if you're trying to emphasize different career experiences for a particular job. And for that reason, you might want to create a duplicate resume for every position for which you apply if it's slightly different. Um, so you can do that here in Google Drive by clicking on file and then make a copy and this will create a duplicate of this original. And when you create a duplicate you want to give it a strong name. So here it's not going to be Jane Doe resume necessarily but we could create a dupe for this application named for the job title for which you're applying and this resume is specific to. So you could say Jane Doe collection development librarian since that's the title that I just changed earlier and then once you click OK you can see it's going to save here in my drive so that's going to be your main Google Drive folder go ahead and click OK and here in this tab we've got 
Jane Doe collection development librarian resume, and then we have the original Jane Doe resume. So I can make changes now to this duplicate that are not reflected in this one. Um, I can go back and change the original and they're not reflected here. So like I said, if you have lots of different applications and your resume has been slightly altered in order to fit those applications for a particular job, if you're going between a chronological resume and a skills-based resume, you can use one as your basic template. You've got the template, you've got your information in it, and if you like that formatting, you can go and move things around on the duplicate without affecting the original. You can see both files are now saved here in your drive. Both of them are backed up and they're ready for you to download, move, rename, whatever you need to do. Um, but as of where I go all librarian on you, and I encourage you to use the storage features of this cloud storage service, uh, whichever one you select, to keep your resume and all of the copies that you make organized, and not just organized, but as organized as possible. Uh, create folders to store your resume. Create subfolders to store different types of resumes, whether that means you organize them by type, like we have this job application version, whether you organize them by date that you created them, whether it's by progress, you know, do you have draft folders, do you have completed folders, um, or like I said, by job application. If you're creating duplicate copies of your resume, rename them so that you can identify one resume from another at a glance, um, like we did here. And when you pick an organizational method and you pick a naming system, stick to that system, stick to that structure so that as you create new resumes and as you get rid of your dated ones, you know exactly what belongs where and you already know how you're going to name it because you've been using that same system. Um, I cannot think of anything worse than creating an awesome resume and it looking so pro polished and so professional, and then you can't find it among all your other files, or you can't distinguish one of them from another if it's a draft or it's a finished product. So don't waste your time looking for something in the future. Start as you mean to go on. Make it easy to find when you set all of this up, and you will not regret it, I promise. So we can put this into practice across all three of the services I talk about in this video. In the interest of time, I'm just going to demonstrate on Google Drive how you can create folders and organize your resumes. If you want to see how to create folders on Drive, OneDrive I should say, and iCloud, watch those videos on our tech playlist too because I do go through that as well, how to create folders and subfolders. General folder of a very broad category, and that is all of our resumes, right? You know that anything resume related is going to be ultimately in this very large folder called resumes. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start here in the My Drive section of our Drive. And we're going to create a new folder by clicking here on the new button, click on folder. You can also, if you want to, here on this blank space on my drive, right click and click new folder. Either way, you're going to get a new folder that you can then name. And name it as soon as you create it. Don't leave your future self hanging by leaving this folder titled untitled folder. The more untitled folders you have or untitled documents that you have, the more confusion you create. So we're going to call this resumes, click create. And then here it is, it shows up. And then just know that all of your files are going to be listed alphabetically here and your folders will be listed alphabetically. You can change from list view to grid view here if it helps you visually to see what your resumes look like and what your folders look like. I do like the grid view, so I'm gonna keep that as it is. And you can be happy with just one general folder for all of your resumes. Um, if you're creating lots of resume files and they have different characteristics, consider creating subfolders for those different categories that will then fall under the very broad resumes category. Here's a fun thing that you can do in Google Drive. I'm going to show you if you right click on a folder, you can change its color. And I am a color coding person. That's just who I am. So I'm going to make this a nice bright red that stands out when I can see it. And then I am also a subfolder person. So what you'll do to create subfolders is double click on your main folder. You can see resumes is completely blank. And if you want to create a subfolder while you're in the main category, just do that right click or hit new folder. And this will create a new folder within resumes. So my fictional librarian, Jane Doe, is going to follow the same pattern as she does for her resume file names. Um, she has different resumes for different types of jobs for which she'd apply. So within this very broad category of re resumes overall, I'd like her to create a folder for each type of job. So say she's a reference librarian and she applies for reference jobs. So she'll have reference. And she also has some programming experience. So she's gonna apply for programming jobs. And she'll have a programming folder. 
And then maybe she likes to have like a general resume that can just list her work history chronologically. So we'll just have chronological. And because uh, my fictional librarian Jane Doe is very much like me, she's also going to color code all of these subfolders. Um, you could probably tell I'm the type of person who has sticky notes and like actual physical folders that are also color coded. Um, and if you want to highlight multiple folders or files, you can click and drag to highlight all at once. And that way you can make a blanket change. I'm going to right click on these, click change color. I'm going to make them that same bright red. So in this scenario, each type of resume gets its own folder, and of course she can leave room in the future for new types of folders. And fictional Jane and you, if you decide to rename your folders, eventually can do that just by right-clicking on a folder and then clicking this rename button, and then you can change that. You can call it chronological or call it general, change it to a date, whatever you need to do. If you have one resume folder, or if you have one folder per type of resume or per year, that's completely up to you. Just make sure that it works for you and that you're happy with that system. And you know that you can change it at any time if you're not happy. The last thing we're going to do is just organize our files for, by folder or subfolder. To get back to your drive, you can click here on My Drive. You can also click here on Drive, or you can click here on My Drive, which is what I'm going to do. And then we can move these resume files into our folders. So click and drag and drop into the folder. Um, and we're probably going to move both of these. So again, you can highlight both of them and click and drag simultaneously, and that'll move them into the resumes folders. Another way that you can move your files is to select, and then right click, you'll see this move to button, and then you can select in your drive, you can even go back a little bit further, you can select which folder or which subfolder you'd like to move to within that file hierarchy. Um, I think drag and drop is pretty easy, and we know that this is Jane's original chronological resume, so we're just going to drag and drop that into chronological. And so here you can see in this scenario, I have a file where the name convention that I've used doesn't quite fit these categories that I've built, and you might find that as time goes on, your file names or your folder names need to evolve. If you need to rename anything, so for example, if I know that this should be Jane Doe Programming Librarian, I can just right click and then change the name. And then I can also do that here for my folder. Again, right click, click rename, and I can even give this like a broader category if I want to. And then I can move that into there, and then it's organized within my subfolders. The last thing I'd like to show you on Google Drive is how you can share your files directly with others. And there's a few ways to approach Google Drive sharing. One is to share by creating a link to your Google Doc that people can view or edit, or to share the doc with them directly. Um, so in this case, we're going to open up our chronological resume. And you can do this in a couple different ways. I like to do it when my file is actually open. Um, my favorite way is to attach the file from the document and send it to a recipient. But where this takes a slightly different turn is that you're not attaching it in Google Doc form, and therefore your recipient doesn't need a Google account to see it. And here's how you would do that. You click on File, and click Email as Attachment, and you can put in the email address of your recipient. We'll just use myself as an example again. The subject of your email will be your document name. So you might want to change that so that um, whomever is receiving your email message understands what the contents of your message are. And then you can add a message to them. And then here you see that you can select the format of your document from the list. And it's that same list from when we went to download. So you can default to PDF, or you can select Word document from the list. Just be mindful that the formatting might not look the way it does here on Google Doc. And once you've selected your format, I'll keep that as PDF, you can click Send, and it'll go off as an attachment to your recipient. And that's it. Before we go, I just wanted to let you know that you can also do this process in both Microsoft OneDrive and iCloud, which is an Apple product. Not everybody's a Google user and not everybody wants to be a Google user, so there are free resume templates on both of those services that we'll be exploring in their videos. And if you'd like to learn more about how to use Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive, or iCloud in general, be sure to check out all of our courses, Basics of OneDrive, Basics of iCloud, and our Google Top Tips videos for Gmail, Google Docs, and Google Drive. Wow, I can't believe I said that in one take. Um, all of those are available in our technology playlist. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the notification button if you'd like to see videos like this pop up in your feed in the future. And if you have ideas for different tech tips videos, I'd love to hear from you. So please check out my contact information and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Thank you so much for watching.